Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry and today we'll be having another board game review for you. Today I will be reviewing this game right here, Deadwood. This is designed by Loic Lamy, or Lamy, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it was originally published by Fantasy Flight Games and Dust Games in collaboration. This game is out of print. I'm going to be setting the game up, showing you guys how it plays, and then we're going to come back and share my final thoughts and grades. So this is what the game of Deadwood looks like set up. You have some building tiles that always start the game on the board. You have the town hall, the sheriff's office, the church, the saloon, and then you randomly select four more buildings from the level one stack of building tiles. You shuffle the three respective stacks of buildings numbered on the back, one, two, and three, place them face down. You set aside the train station and the four railroad tracks. When the train station is built, this is one of the three possible end game triggers. You have a bunch of the dice, which will be rolled during combat for worker placement spots. And each player will get three cowboys to start the game. You have uh, varying levels. You have a level one cowboy, a level two cowboy, and a level three cowboy. And these numbers are only re relevant as it pertains to dueling when two players end up on the same worker placement spot. Also, each player gets five cash, five money to start the game. The money is a very valuable resource. Also, it's your points for the end of the game. And finally, each player gets an ammo um, or a cartridge um, token and they get a horse token. And these are resources that, again, are very useful for dueling or for avoiding duels when two players end up in the same worker placement spot. We have a supply here of wanted posters, which players will be accruing each time they instigate a duel. And you set aside a certain amount for the game, five for each player. So this is a three-player game we've set up here. So there's 15 of these wanted posters. And here on the side... We have additional workers of all the three different levels, one, two, and three, for all the other players. They only start with three workers available to them in the ranch, in their ranch, but there are actions they could take, in particular the saloon action, which allow them to acquire additional workers going forward. Now, on a player's turn, there's only one of two actions they can take. They can either place one of their workers on a spot, and it doesn't have to be empty, or two, they can uh, remove all their workers from the board, right? Because if you do not have a worker available to you in your supply, you cannot place them down. You cannot move them from location to location, and they do not all go back into your hand at the end of a turn. So manipulating that situation is very critical in this game. Also, I forgot to mention, you've got the nice sheriff's token, and you put the sheriff, the sheriff starts the game intersecting with the sheriff's office and the two buildings immediately underneath it. The sheriff will be moved from, from uh, throughout the game. Every time you go to the sheriff's office, you have the right to move the sheriff's uh, uh, tile piece. And it will always intersect with three buildings, which means three buildings will always be safe from dueling. Wherever the sheriff is present, you cannot place a worker there and engage in a duel. Okay, so let's just simulate what this game would look like. So I'm going to start with the uh, purple player right here. And I am going to go, I am going to go to, I want to make some money. No, I want to add some workers. I'm going to go to the saloon right here with my purple level one worker. And I am going to get a worker. When you go to the saloon, you get an additional worker from this uh, from the pool over here, and you add it to your ranch, right, which is immediately available to you. So I could either get a level one worker for free, or I could get a level two worker for one dollar. Let me just show you this tile, or I can get a level three worker for three dollars. So right now I'm gonna be a little stingy. I just want to have more workers in my supply, so I'm gonna get a level one worker right there. Okay, so now the green player will go and the green player is gonna go uh, to the stage depot. And the stage depot is very helpful. First of all, it allows you to build, it allows you to get $2. 
right here, straight straight off the bat, you get two dollars. But it's also gonna allow you to build a um, to add a building to the board. So we're gonna add a building over here, and wherever you place a building, it needs to be adjacent to somewhere where um, somewhere that's already present. So it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. So I'm going to. I'm going to place, this is the blacksmith, by the way. You could draw from any stack. I drew from the level one uh, stack. I'm going to add the blacksmith. So as the game progresses, there's going to be more buildings available and there will be um, uh, more options for your worker placement spots. Now, with the stage depot also, it says that if the game ends before the train station is built, the player who controls the stage depot is going to get a bonus $10. Now, I mentioned that because there are three different endgame triggers. It's not just the potential building of the train station, but also if any one player loses all of their workers, that includes the um, additional workers here on the reserve pool, if they lose all their workers, they die, that's how you lose your workers, it, through combat, through dueling, that's another endgame trigger. And also, if these wanted posters run out, and there's 15 of them, that means there could be 15 duels throughout the game, when they run out, that's another end game trigger. So it's possible for the game to end without the train station being built. Okay, so this person's going to get $2. I never got the $2. And now we will move on to the red player. And the red player, uh, the red player here is going to prepare himself for battle. He's going to go to the gunsmith right here. And the gunsmith, not only is it going to get him $1, which again, your money is your victory points, but it's also going to get him two cartridges, two cartridge tokens, which are very helpful for combat. And I will show soon how combat works. All right, so we're done. We're back to the um, purple player. They cannot pick up this piece. This piece, well, they could if they wanted to use their turn to just pick up that piece. Usually, if you're going to pick pieces up, you want to reserve it for an opportunity where you can pick several of them up, if not all, right? So this player is going to go to the grocery and the way the grocery works is first of all it gives you a dollar right it gives you a dollar and second of all it allows you to move an already existing worker that's already placed down to another building so i'm going to use this here and i'm going to go to the blacksmith and the blacksmith not only will the blacksmith give me a dollar, but it allows me to get one of these horse cartridges, which will be helpful for allowing you to skedaddle or escape, avoid, evade combat or conflict. So I'll get one of these tokens, which is going to be very helpful for me because so far I only have weak um, players, weak tokens on the board. So I want to give myself the opportunity to run away just in case anybody messes with me. So... I get an additional dollar for that, and I get that token. Okay, so now we'll proceed to the green player's turn. And since the purple player unoccupied the saloon, because I cannot, I couldn't have gone to the saloon, the undertaker, or the sheriff, because the sheriff is right there, the sheriff's office. So now that they've unoccupied the saloon, the green player is going to go there with their number two, and they're going to pay one dollar to get a level two worker. Right there. All right. And now it's the red player's turn. And the red player does not have too many options left. But the red player feels good about their chances for conflict. So they're going to place their level two character here on the Undertaker building. And the Undertaker building, not only does it give you $1, but every time a cowboy is killed, whether you're the one who does it or not, whoever controls the Undertaker building is going to get a $1 bonus. And I think that the red player, because of their ammo, their cartridges that they added, they feel confident about being able to kill some cowboys. So they also get a dollar, and they're done with their turns. All right, so now it's back to the purple players, and we are running out of buildings. So one way or another, some conflict is going to happen. So the purple player is going to go to the town hall here with their number two. And the town hall, first of all, it's a great spot to discard and get rid of your wanted posters. Because at the end of the game, uh, the wanted posters are going to count 
uh, as negative points towards you and in incremental values. So the more wanted posters you have, that could be very detrimental to your final score. So I don't have any wanted posters, so that is a no benefit of me. But I also get to build one railroad track in any direction of my choice. And I get to reveal three buildings or add three buildings, one from each of the three stacks onto the player board, which is great because that's going to open more worker placement options and hopefully decrease the chances of conflict because the purple player does not want to engage in conflict. So, first of all, I'll add a railroad track, and the railroad track always starts from the center bottom of the board, and you always have two options as far as the direction in which you're going to go, right? There's always a fork. The, the railroad track here consists of several forks. So, I'm going to see if I go this way, uh, very, you know, hmm, you know what? The general store... I'm going to go this way, hopefully get rid of the gunsmith, because eventually what's going to happen with these railroad tracks is that they're going to go over buildings. And if they go over already established buildings, those buildings are nullified. They're removed from the game and you can no longer activate them. Okay, so there's that. I built the railroad track over here in this direction. And now we'll add three more buildings. We have the laundry right here. I'll just place this right here. Um... And then I will place the saloon, another, that's an additional saloon, right, from level two. And then I will place the building here from number three, the newspaper. And I will place it right here. And by the way, some of these spaces are marked off with red squares. That's just to indicate that the train station, when it finally is built, has to be built in one of these four boxes or squares that have red, that have a red outline around them. So once three of them, for example, are occupied, that fourth one must be reserved eventually for the train station. So I'm just going to add the newspaper right there. Okay. And now the purple player is done with their turn. Now we will proceed to the green player. And the green player is going to capitalize on the fact that there are some more buildings to choose from. So let us see right here. What does the green player want to do? Uh, so we do have some new options. We have the laundry. We have the newspaper and we have the saloon. Uh, uh, so if you go to the newspaper, not only do you take one dollar, but you also have to take one wanted poster and give it to a player of your choice. So this is a way of hurting players because, again, those wanted posters are negative points at the end of the turn. So the green player is going to go over here to the newspaper they're going to get a dollar, and they anticipate that, the green player anticipates that the red player is getting ready for battle, and he looks intimidating. So he's going to give him a wanted poster to already back him off a little bit from trying to come back, compete. Because remember, every time you initiate a duel, you're going to get more of these wanted posters. So perhaps the red player may not want to do that. Okay, now it's the red player's turn. And the green player thought wrong. He is going to try to instigate battle. Uh, in particular, he is going to go to... Huh, where does he want to go? The green player is going to go somewhere. He can't go to these three buildings because there's a sheriff right there. So he might want to go to the stage depot. This guy is just a one. So yeah, he's going to go to the stage depot here with his three. And now they're going to compete to see who remains in this space. So first of all, the green, the red player has a level three cowboy there. And the green player who was there first has a level one. Now, if the green player wants to, they can skedaddle. They can escape and flee by paying one of these pony tokens. However, every time they flee, they don't get their worker back immediately into their supply. They get it over here in this little area here, this camp here. And 
the only way they can retrieve this worker is whenever they use the actions to retrieve all the workers from the board. So there is that. So the green player doesn't like his odds, but for the sake of this video, they're going to engage in combat. So the way the combat works is players, starting with the attacking player, can contribute as many... Well, actually, no, they can only contribute one. They can contribute one of their ammunition or cartridges, cartridge tokens, to the battle to add to their strength. So the red player, who's the aggressor, will contribute one, and the green player, who's defending, will also contribute one. So those... Uh, cartridges add to their power so now the three plus the one becomes a four and the two the one plus the one becomes a two so what happens is each player grabs dice equal to their strength now the player who has more dice will compare their amount of dice with the player who has the least dice and subtract to make the difference so four minus two equals two so what this means is that the more powerful player is actually going to roll two dice in order to attack the other player before the other player could even respond, right? So it's like a little bit of a head start. They get the, the edge as far as this uh, duel is concerned, right? So now we're going to roll these two dice. If you roll a five, a five is considered a hit and it wounds your opponent a four is also considered a wound so a four and a five is considered a wound players can only take two wounds or two hits once you're hit twice you have been killed but a six is an automatic kill any sixes that are rolled are automatic kills so anywhere from one to three is a miss so here goes the red player is going to roll these two dice and they rolled a three and a one so those are both misses so their little head start is done, and now they're going to go back and forth shooting each other. So the green player will retaliate. They will roll one die, and they rolled a five, and a five is a hit. So we'll put this dice on top of the red player to indicate that he has been hit. So at this point, you're only rolling one die at a time. You only roll the multiple dice when you're doing your first initial attack, and you're subtracting the differences from each other. So now, the red player still has their two other dice to roll from. They're going to roll one right now. And they rolled a five. So it's also a hit. And they each have two dice left. But if they don't get a hit, this is going to be a tie. And the red player, the aggressor, is going to be forced to retreat over here. So let's roll this dice. Oh, and it is a five. So the green player, although they had a much weaker cowboy actually kills the red player's uh, cowboy. So we put him here in Boot Hill, which is like a cemetery for outlaw cowboys. And now the red player has permanently lost this worker. Also, I forgot to mention that they should get a wanted poster for instigating that duel. And because they never took control of this building, they do not get the bonuses for the building. The green player has survived, and the red player is done with their turn. Okay, so now we proceed back to the purple player's turn. They have one worker here in their pool, and they are going to try to succeed where the red player failed. They're going to go to the stage depot right here, and they're going to try to have a duel with this uh, so he's, the purple player is putting their level 3 cowboy, by the way. And they're going to try to have a duel again with this level 1 cowboy for the green player. So the purple player will contribute. Uh, well, first of all, the green player has to decide whether or not they want to skedaddle. And they do not want to skedaddle for the sake of this video. Normally they would because, remember, they don't have no cartridges available to them. So the purple player will contribute a cartridge. The green player has no cartridges. So we're going to compare their strengths, and it's going to be 4 to 1, which means the, uh, the purple player grabs 4 dice, and the green player uh, grabs 1. We subtract the difference, and it's 3. So the green player, is uh, the purple player, is actually going to roll 3 dice before the green player even rolls 1. And we've got a 5, a 3, and a 1. So these two are misses, but the 5 is a hit. And now each player will get a chance to roll one die. Because the green player will only roll one die, they need a six to get an automatic kill. 
and they rolled a six. Don't mess with the green player. So they have killed, they have killed the purple player. And the purple player is buried over here. And that's pretty much how the game plays as the game progresses. You're going to add more buildings that add different worker placement spots, different ways of you getting money or getting some other resources that are helpful for you. Um, you know, optimizing your worker placement op opportunities. Um, uh, and also opportunities to get rid of your wanted posters like the church, for example, and the town hall. Because in the case of the red player, he already has two wanted posters, which is going to cost them points at the end of the game. And that's pretty much it. That's how the game plays. Now let's get to uh, hear my final thoughts and grades. So that is how you play Deadwood. Let's get straight to my grades. First, let's start with components. I'm going to give this a B- minus for components. There are adequate components in this game, but based on the time when this game came out, it was published around 2012, and the fact that Fantasy Flight had a hand in this, I'm going to say that it slightly, just barely, misses the mark, right? So I think the... First of all, the color schemes on the game board in particular, the box art is, is fine, it's beautiful, but the color schemes on the game board, it's, it's not an evocative enough for this type of thematic style game. Also, the workers, they went with tiles for the workers, right? And I guess they went this route because, yes, it's easier to distinguish between the different ranking of cowboys. However, I feel like there's a multitude of ways that they could have gone about this. They could have gone with... Um, writing uh, numbers on the meeples to indicate which ones are your one, twos, and threes. They could have made uh, different sized meeples or even different shaped meeples to create this distinction between the different workers. So th it feels like tile placement, but this is not a tile placement game. Yes, you have your tiles, which represent your buildings that you're putting on the board to represent the growth and the expansion of the city of Deadwood. But then you've got tiles for your workers I don't know, there's just something about it, it disconnects with me, so from a uh, component perspective, I cannot give it too high of a grade, which is why I give it a B-. minus. Now let's move on to theme. I'm going to give this an A. This is a very thematic, rich game. Now, I must admit my bias, I'm a big fan of the Wild West theme. The Wild West theme is in particular the romanticized Wild West theme. And this has lots of Wild West flavor. You've got the dueling between the Cowboys and when they share a worker placement spot. You got the uh, the uh, um, the, gu uh, the gun uh, slinging with the rolling of the dice and even your horses that you could use to run away and flee. The um, boot hill where you bury the dead cowboys. All these really cool things that I appreciate. Uh, you've got the wanted posters for a person who's too aggressive and t starts too many duels. But you can go to church and have your sins forgiven. Really cool, thematically speaking, the idea of the railroad expansion and eventually the train station being built. Again, from a thematic perspective, solid A uh, for a grade in this game. Now we're going to move on to gameplay. And for gameplay, I'm also going to give this an A-. minus. Uh, I like the gameplay. It's not an amazing game, but it's a really good one. Uh, the worker placement is solid. The different buildings are just different enough, nothing radical, just different enough that it does make you consider which building you will go to versus another. I also just love the progression of this game. The game starts with just a few buildings you can choose from um, in the city of Deadwood. And as the game progresses, you're making decisions that add more buildings to the city and therefore add more choices and more actions. You also have your um, growing collection or pool or supply of workers, which again gives you more options. So the progression of this game really, really feels it. I also love the idea that there's three different end game conditions. You can end the game either by uh, the moment one player loses all their cowboys, the moment that uh, the wanted posters run out, or the moment that the fourth railroad and finally the train station is built. Three different endgame triggers for players to keep in their back of their mind and be aware of their surroundings, so to speak, aware of what's going on and aware of the, um, you know, imaginary clock that's ticking. You know that you don't have an infinite amount of time and that any one of these three endgame triggers can come out of nowhere and surprise you and therefore the game will be over. So all of those factors I really like. Now let's talk about 
Now let's talk about the novelty factor. I'm going to give this a C. Uh, this game is not necessarily innovative. It does borrow concepts from other games. The idea of dueling for worker placement spots. The idea of um, adding to your worker uh, pool, right? As the game progresses, you add more workers. Uh, but there is this hierarchy of workers that's not necessarily done in every game. You know, you have your one, your two, your three. It's a clear delineation as to which ones are more valuable. And in this case... The relevancy of that is not that they can do more, but that they're more secure and they're safer in the worker placement spots and safer from dying in the event that they do partake of or partake in a duel. So there is that. I like the idea of getting the ammos and the and the um, horse tokens as ways to increase your abilities to either combat or run away when duels are triggered. So that part is all cool. Um, also, uh, I like the idea that the railroad... As it grows, as it's being built, as it expands, you lay the track and eventually as the game progresses, you'll be laying the track on spots that actually cover certain buildings and destroy them and therefore render them null and void and no longer places that you could go for your worker placement spot. I think that's cool. Uh, there's lots of games that have this idea of progression where you have more and more options, more and more worker placement spots as the game uh, progresses. Uh, but here's there's a little bit of like um, a bell curve almost, a crescendo where you um, you progress and you have more and more worker placement spots typically. But at a certain point of the game, you start laying that railroad track in a certain angle and one or two spots are no longer available for you in the game. So I, I like that idea, the idea of regressing back a little bit and taking away some of the actions. And it definitely makes you choose as a player where you place these buildings uh, going forward, right? These um, additional worker placement spots that you're adding as players individually throughout the game. Really, really cool. So there are some, some aspects of gameplay here, which is why this is not going to get an F or a D. I'm giving it somewhere in the middle a C. And then finally, we're going to get to uh, my overall score. And for overall score, I'm going to give this uh, A-. minus. This is a really good game, guys. I like this game. Again, there's my Wild West bias, uh, but this game has been enjoy enjoyable for me. I've only played it a few times. I need to play this game more, quite frankly. Um, you know, I, you need the right group of people, people that get into it. You do need at least three players to play this. Uh, this is not a worker placement game for two players. Uh, I'm sure there might be a two-player variant out there somewhere, but... I would have a hard time believing that it would be nearly as interesting as if you played three or more players. But yeah, that's it for my review. Thank you so much for joining us here at When Harry Met Board Games. Please comment down below. Tell me what you think about this game. Deadwood, perhaps you've played it. Perhaps you've played similar games, Wild West themed games with worker placement and city, and city building. I'm interested in reading what you guys have to say. This is Harry from When Harry Met Board Games saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.